All right, here we go. 600 Breezy. <laughs> Welcome back. Back, man. Welcome back. back. Our third interview. Yeah. Our third interview. Yeah. Before we talk about anything else, you got a new project. Yeah. Retaliation. Retaliation. Why that name, first of all? It's like, that's how I feel about the music and the project. It's like a, it's, it's, it's retaliation. It's, it's a comeback. It's, it's just anybody who doubted me, anybody just, retaliation just, it was just a word to sum it all up for me. Cause it's like, all right, I, I did a lot of jail time. I had a lot of certain little things happening in my career. And I feel like this project is just like retaliation towards the haters, towards everything. Like it just makes sense. The name made sense to me. Okay. And I've seen the cover. Yeah. And you basically put all your mug shots. That's not even all of them. <laughs> 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 that's the crazy part that's not even all it's it's more but that's that's it's a majority yeah okay i never realized you had dreads at one point oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was before the rap career though right i was gonna say the whole time i've known you you've always had short hair so. yeah the, the dreads was a it was a treacherous time i was young i was young young i was probably like 19 so it was like i was really i was doing young young dude stuff like right. uh, so I was I was loose. So I cut the dreads and I never grown back. Okay. And uh the song you released first is uh, Eleven Guns. Yeah. Okay, why that name, first of all? Um that was just one of the first lines in the song. Like I pull up to your funeral, eleven guns, never had to watch M T V to see a Reverend Run. Right. And like those was that was just, that that line was factual. But yeah, that's why I just chose eleven guns. It's like a, it's like instead of a twenty-one gun salute, it's like eleven gun salute too. Okay, and when you say it was factual, I mean I've heard stories of shootouts in Chicago happening, funerals, <laughs> and, and that type of thing. I'm not saying yeah, that you I did it. I don't, I, don't, I don't gotta dig deep into it. Right, but but, just, but this is the thing that actually happens. Like I said, we're not going to talk about whatever nah, you yeah. did, but I've heard of situations in Chicago. It's bad. Yeah, like it'll be a funeral, and then the funeral will get shot up. Man, it'd be like somebody else gets shot at the front row, but it's just Chicago. It's treacherous, bro. It's like, you know, have, the war is just never stopped. It's hereditary. It's going to keep going. So it's just, I don't, I don't know how all them guns got in Chicago anyway. So, yeah. Know. Well, and in the 11 Guns video, you're actually at a cemetery. Yeah, yeah. That's But that was AZ, though. You know, he got the, the From the Block series. Yeah. And, um, he, yeah, he did. didn't do it at funeral <laughs> at cemeteries, you know what I'm saying? Like you see it in people's projects and all that. The cemetery is kind of unique. Yeah, because it was like majority of stuff I rap about is the stuff I seen in, in Chicago. So it's like, you know, when you like, people think of Chicago, they think of gangs and death, and murder. And so it was just like, just like, shit, let's just do it from the cemetery. Like okay. the shit I was talking about, it was like. It, it fit, so I ain't really never seen nobody do it. Like, no, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I never really seen nobody do it, so I was like, shit, it's gonna be a first. I try to do different than what everybody else did. Now, was that in Chicago, the cemetery? Oh, no, 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 no. I was in Atlanta. Okay. I was in Atlanta. I would have never did that in Chicago. Oh, because it would attract too much attention? And yeah, I, I wouldn't have been there to shoot that video for too long. I probably could have, but ain't no telling. Probably the shoot probably would have never got finished. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why risk it? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I was, you don't you don't even live in Chicago anymore, right? No, I haven't lived in Chicago since I came home in 2019. Right, so, as you should. Yeah, as you should, because you know, when I think about how many young men I've interviewed that I've talked about mm. moving out of their cities and they who don't getting killed mm -hmm. in their cities with Jay the Youngin being the latest. Exactly. 24 years old. At his mom's house, too. Ambushed by five people, I think. Did his dad get shot in the process yeah. also? And they tried to make it seem like it was about his dad or whatever. But we all know, like, once you prosper and then you coming up in your own community like that, you got to think if you had beef, even if you ain't have beef with nobody, even if you're not in the streets or whatever. Like, look at Triple uh, X Tentacion. Yeah. He didn't know he didn't have no beef with them guys. They just was trying to take from him. But he was at home and he had a lot of money and he driving a nice car and they like, ah, oh, fuck this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, so with JD Young's situation, he probably was 
gang affiliate or whatever, but they ain't get no reason for five niggas to come kill him in front of his moms too. You know, and he just coming home showing some love. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get out that environment. Like you gotta leave. Like ain't no point in staying at home. You can visit, cool, yeah, it's cool to visit. But like when he just went to go visit, you're supposed to have protection around him. Yeah, no, it's it's fucked up. And when you look at like, for example, Chief Keef, mm -hmm. once he popped, he said, I'm going to Calabasas. He never I'm going to go live it but, up. I'm going to get a mansion. I'm going to bring all my homies with me. Yeah. And, but, and I've literally, I don't think I've seen Chief Keefe in Chicago physically since then. He hasn't been home. He yeah. hasn't been home at all. But it was a lot behind his story, though. All the people that he thought he can trust were well, majority of the people. They kind of, they what we call backdoor. They didn't kill him or nothing, but they stole from him. They mm. did some shit that people don't really know about. So he was just like, all right, I'm gone and fuck them niggas and I'm I'm Chief Keith, so I'm I don't need y'all. Y'all need me, and y'all stealing from me. Like so, I'ma just go ahead and feel me go live my life great in Cali. And he he he, he did the right thing. He ain't got to come the back. Absolute home. right thing. But, yeah. I mean, like he don't have nothing to prove. I mean, imagine if he did. I mean, he could do a stadium in Chicago if he of wanted course, to. Of course, sell out. He can sell out the United Center exactly right now. He right can sell now. it out every week if he wanted to. Yeah, like because he's Chief Keith. But he like said, why come home? I don't got no reason to come home. Like, put himself in harm's way. Because even the police don't even like him. Yeah. So, ain't no telling. Like, he got too much to look out for. So, he what he doing, what he did was smart. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so the new album. Like we talked about Retaliation. I've seen the cover, but I haven't seen the track listing yet. Yeah, track list is dropping in a few days. Okay. But, so, any features? Um, yeah, I got, I believe it's only two features on this project, but I got a lot of features in the cut, but um, I got Money Man on there. Me and Money okay. Man got a, a crazy joint on there. It's like, it's like kind of dancey, strip clubby. It's going to be different than what people used to from me. So when they hear it, they're going to be like, oh shit. And then um, I got a uh, Filthy Rich homie to the bands on there. So, cause he, the, he was in the studio and it just was organic. And then the song was so hard. I'm like, I'm just put on my project. But yeah. Um, but I got Hitmaker, Hitmaker produced me and uh, Money Man song. Nice. I got Forever Rolling, a couple tracks by him. Um, my One of my favorite producers is uh, Markel from Mississippi. That's like my personal producer. He's all over the project. So, yeah, um, yeah this, this, one, this one hard, though. This one for the books, bro, because... I, like I even got an ass shaking song on there, you know. People not <laughs> people used to me just rah 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 like ah oh, we do this and do that bang bang shoot them up. So they're not gonna really expect it, but like oh shit, like it's a you can hear the growth in this one. Like well yeah, I mean like I've always said in our last interview, I always felt like you had star potential, mm -hmm. but you don't put out as m enough music, mm -hmm. and you agreed with me. Yeah, hundred percent. It was just in the streets still. You know, like I had millions of views and was still in Chicago broke because, you know, the people that was around me was still in the money. Didn't know I had them. And so it was just like all I knew was 59th Street. So all I knew was like, oh, I'm I'm 600. We outside, we gang banging and I'm doing this for my homies. Like I never really took it serious. So now it's like, all right, I'm 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 beyond all that. Like I did all that. I don't got nothing else to prove. Let me really do the music because I, I got it. Like anybody else with this opportunity, they would have been doing way more. So I mean, you're in your thirties now. Yeah. You know, you have kids now, you, yeah. you're growing up. You can't be doing the shit you're doing in your teens, exactly. you're, or in your twenties. Exactly. You know, and if you try to do that, you'll end up how you ended up in your teens, in your twenties. Like jail, in and out. Exactly. Yeah. But like, how much total jail time have you done if you add it all up? I can't even tell because <laughs> I was do always doing like a little stint, like a few months here, a few months there. Then I go and do two years. I go do a year. Like, so probably all together. I, I probably ain't, can't tell you. It's over four years, though. For too sure, much. For sure. Too much. Too much. Way too much. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, after our last interview, you got arrested again. Yeah. About a, which we, of course, like got blamed for. It was Vlad TV's fault. And, 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 you know, and I was locked up, so it's like I couldn't help you. And it's like, that's okay. Hey, that's know? okay. We 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 take our, our our arrows. You know, we take the blame. You know, uh, we go, oh, oh, see, 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 that breeze, you get a Vlad TV, and he gets arrested right afterwards. I had a warrant while I was sitting there doing the interview with you. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know what it was for. I knew that my PO called me and told me to come take a drop. And I basically was like, nah, because I was all the way in LA. She's like, yeah, come to Atlanta. 
come take a drop, and that was weird to me. But that was right after that argument I had with Six Nine. So that taught me to not do a lot of things I did with them rappers when they trolling and whatever. Because he had me yelling at him on the phone, "Oh, you gonna die? You gonna ah, oh, you gonna die?" And I got violated for that. So because of your what you guys were on Facetime or we was, was it? On, we was on Instagram Live. On Instagram Live, because yeah. you had an argument with Takashi Six Nine. And this was after he had already told on everybody. Yes. So you know what you were dealing with. It's not like this is a surprise. I didn't see, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know him personally, so I didn't think that really anything around him was really police like that. But, yeah, like, we had that argument on live. I never said personally, like, I'm going to kill you. I never said that. But I was, was like, man, you're going to die. You're going to die. Not knowing, like, and thinking, like, um, moving too fast. I'm on parole. All that shit can get me violated. That shit, I already got violated that fast, literally. I mean, it just happened to Fetty Wap yeah. just the other day. He's in jail right now because he threatened a man over FaceTime with, like, a gun, allegedly. But allegedly. See, that's a whole different thing because he's... He was out on bond for like bricks of fentanyl and shit like that. And right. Like super trafficking and shit. My shit was like, uh, mine's yeah. was way less than that. So it's like, I didn't expect them. I was, I had like four or five months left of parole. So then your time stopped. So as soon as I had the argument with them, they called me in probably two days later to come take a drop. And I knew, like, I, mean, I haven't seen them in two years. I've been on non report. So I know I'm not coming to take a drop. I know that you calling me so you can lock me up. But I didn't think it was for the 6 9 situation until I got to prison and seen the paperwork. And that's exactly what it said. Like, oh, so it actually was because of the 6 9 oh, situation. Yes. yes. But he didn't personally go and report you. No, it was somebody from his team, though. Somebody from his oh. team contacted. See, like, they did their homework, but they didn't really know where to go, but they they got to where they needed to be. So I caught my charge in Waterloo, Iowa. Somebody from his team contacted the DA from Waterloo, Iowa and was like, oh, oh, this guy, oh, he's on, he has a case with you guys. He's on probation, parole, whatever. Oh, well, he threatened my artist or such and such. What? So, yeah. So then the people from Waterloo reached out to Des Moines, Iowa, which is parole, because I'm not on probation. I was on parole now. It's a whole different, different jurisdiction. It just was like, hey, y'all not seeing what he doing. He just threatened to kill somebody. And then they like, all right, contact Atlanta, because that's where Georgia, where I transferred it to. They like, yeah, contact them. Tell them we need him. Like, let's go ahead. Just go get him. So Okay, so had you not done that, would you have avoided that prison time? A hundred percent. Really? I, I would have I'd have been done with parole. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, that was some bullshit that his team did, but you also have to take responsibility for what you did. Oh, yeah, I had to take full responsibility yeah. for it because that's like, why am I even doing this on the internet? Right. Knowing I'm a convicted, two-time convicted felon on parole, like no matter how much time I got left, whatever, I'm still, that's like, it wasn't smart for me to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, that was 100% my fault. Like, I had got out and I posted the paperwork just to show people, like, no, I really went to jail for that. And they like, damn. But they was trying to make it seem like, oh, 600 Breezy saying 6 9 snitched on him. No, I didn't say 6 9 snitched on me. But his team definitely reached out and was like, oh, yeah, he's threatening him and such and such. Mm -hmm. And because that's how it's wrote, line for line in the paperwork. So, it's like, all right. But, yeah, I, I just know better. I know better to do that. Okay, so you violated your, was it per parole? Pro, probation? Yeah. Pro. So you went back in for how long? Um, I had like, what, four and a half months left. So mm. they just made me finish my remainder time. So I got snatched up and I, I left the interview. I left from New York, went to Alabama and went home. I was living down there and just was in the car going to the grocery store and my girl got pulled over. And we on the back road in Alabama and she didn't want to pull over. So she kind of just put her hazards on and took them like a half a mile up. And I'm like, pull over, what you doing? But it was like when the officer came to the car, he didn't even look. He looked right past her and looked at me and was like, you got your ID? I'm like, why are you talking to me for? Are you, you know, give her her ticket or whatever, bro. I'm a passenger. He called so much backup. And it just so happened all the backup was black. Every, like, every person was black. So it was like somebody was like, oh, 600 Breezy, what's up? I'm like, damn. I'm telling her like, baby, I'm finna go to jail. She, why? I'm like, I know I had a warrant. They told me to come take a UA a long time ago. And I just was like, fuck it. Because I knew it was weird. But yeah. So when I when I finally got from, I didn't even know in Alabama. I sat in Alabama for about three weeks. And they transferred me up to Iowa. It took me about a week to fucking get there in a van. And um, when I got there and went to court, 
that's exactly the paperwork. It was like threatening, basically threatening Six Nine. Like I threatened to kill a rapper Takashi Six Nine or whatever, and it told how they got the information and who called in and shit like that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how were those four and a half months? I ain't gonna lie, bro. Now I remember we even sat here and did interviews about my prison time or whatever. Right. I got in trouble for that shit this time. Oh, really? So I had to go back to Iowa because that's where my case at. So as soon as I got there, I was in a hole the whole time. Hmm. I was only in general population for th my last three weeks. So when I got there, they took me to to the county, the Polk County. I see the judge or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We agree on the time I had left. We do that. They sent me to prison. As soon as I got to prison, it was just like they brought God up. Oh, he said some 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 very conflicting things about the Iowa prison system and a Vlad TV interview. And, you know, because, you know, I was just talking like, yeah, I was in there. I'm smoking weed. I'm chilling. I was like, I had the yard, like whatever. Because you were thinking you're not going to go back. Fuck no. And Definitely didn't think I was going. So it's like when they see me, they like, huh, motherfucker, you thought we weren't going to see you again. So let go ahead and get in this cell 23 and a half hours out the day. Mm. And and you that's it. No phone call. I didn't get no phone. I got a phone call every other day for about 20 minutes. And the uh, the next day, you only get 30 minutes to go shower. Other than that, I was in the cell. I was in the cell. No commissary, no nothing. Just in the cell, miserable. I mean, do you start to go crazy? Yeah, I don't, I don't I mean, feel like- solitary confinement, right? I don't feel like I'm the same right now. I feel like my mind fucked up off that shit. Yeah. Like, cause it was like, I'm just in a, in a small space. I can't even, call my kids, I can't call my mom, my girl, nothing. I'm just, I'm just in a cell and it's like, damn, like only good thing I knew when my out day was, like I know it's over. It wasn't like I was going and I had years of time over my head. I'm damn, I got like four months left, three months left of this shit. But yeah, that's, I ain't gonna lie, that shit, I don't see how niggas doing it for years. That shit, that's, it's not easy. But yeah, I mean, I've interviewed guys like Blue Boy that I think spent like 10 years in solitary confinement you know, for murders and, and the such, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember um, I interviewed Michael Franzis, you know, the, the mafia guy, and I asked what's the worst thing that he went through in prison. He said solitary. He said the humans are not designed to do that. It's humans not, are, are social creatures and they need that more than you realize when they stick you by yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people just lose their minds. Yeah, I felt like a dog, bro. Like yeah. I felt like a caged animal, like I, I treat animals different now it's because it's like, I felt like, I'm like, damn, this is how animals feel when you put them in a cage and you don't show them no attention and don't let them out and they just whining and crying and they, they losing their mind because they you just put them in this small cage, small space, and they only have little areas to poke their nose out. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. But they still, they they need to move around. They need to be able to walk and run. And they they want some attention, some love. They want to be around other animals and people and stuff like that. So yeah, it's like, there's really like, like you a cage animal. It's, it's, it's fucked up though, for real, for real. It's not for nobody, honestly. Well, I mean, growing up in Chicago, have you ever been to Cook County? I, it's, I bond, right? I've never spent more than two days in Cook County a day. Okay. Because I always got a bond. So I had girls sitting there fighting, like, oh, I'm about to bond them out. I'm about to bond them out. So you get a court date right away. Them bullpens is treacherous. You go through so many bullpens. And I don't think nowhere's bullpens is like Chicago's. I well, like to go to court. It's, it's them. There are thousands of people with them bullpens. Well, I had Rico Reckless and, and Ewa Samo mm -hmm. on my show. Mm -hmm. You know the interview I'm talking about? Yeah. They describe something called savage life. See, do, do you know what, I'm what they basically say, and we'll, we'll, we'll play the clip. They 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 spit in the niggas' ass. Yeah, they say they like knock that. dudes out, and they'll spit in your ass. They in Cook County Jail getting savage life. Phone up. They getting that savage life now. Real ask savage. who want to ask what, which one of you motherfuckers want to ask what's happening. What, what's here? savage life? <laughs> well, I don't know where this gay shit started from, but this was going on in Chicago. Cook County Jail, they will knock you the fuck out. Cold, knock you, you out When you cold. hit that ground, you will hit this. Get, get that, that butt! <laughs> Motherfucker that gets that. Nah, the nigga that's fighting that be, get the butt. <laughs> Motherfucker gone. Pull your pants down. Pull your drawers down. Open up your ass and spin your ass. 
And then at that point, it's considered a rape because there's like human material inside of you. And see, I heard of it. So you've never seen that? No, fuck no. Because I've, I've never, never heard of that shit. I've, yeah, I've never made it to deck. Like I've never made like it take you about two days to get through the bullpens to even get upstairs. So your best bet is to to bond out before you even make it to deck. So I never made it on deck because even if I'd have made it on deck, it would have went up. Like no matter what deck I went to, they would have went up because they they would have probably did some petty shit like put me on deck with my ops just so it can go up and then they can send us to the hole or whatever before they send me where my homies at. Because in Chicago they put you with your homies. They ask you if they don't know what you are, they ask you like what are you? You know. And they're like, all right, we're going to put you with your people so it can keep the peace. So, yeah, but that that shit, that's weird. I've been hearing a lot about that. That shit's weird as fuck. Okay, so you heard it from other people as well. Yeah, hell yeah. That's that's insane. Like, like it's 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 true. I've heard it from so many people that I got to believe it. Like, people really come out of jail like, yeah, they knocking niggas out and they spitting in their ass. Like, like, come on, bro. <laughs> so you really pulled that grown man's pants down and spread his ass cheeks open and spit in it, bro. <laughs> That's bro. I ain't gonna use the word, but that they know the word. That's that's that. Yeah, I mean Joe Rogan played that clip on his on his uh, podcast. That that's how big that clip got. Joe Rogan, the guy with the biggest podcast in America, actually played that Rico Reckless meatball sandwich clip, and they were all just laughing. Just yeah, going, that's, like what that's, the fuck? That's crazy. That's the weirdest shit ever. Like, yeah. I don't see. Like, I understand y'all locked up or whatever, but <laughs> like, they just you don't got like just just knocking somebody out. He he got to get if he don't. Get his W back if he don't get like win a fight, whatever. Like, yeah, that's good enough right there. Yeah, stay out of prison, kids. No, for real, <laughs> stay out of prison. <laughs> Especially don't go to jail in Chicago. Don't you you hear what they do? These, these, these are urban legends. This shit is sick. Well, uh, since our last interview, you and Charleston White got into it. Yeah, man, and I'm glad you brought that up because I had no clue who the hell Charleston White was, bro. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm in a movie called Double Crosses, and um, it's like full of like my people from Mississippi. A lot of a lot of people I'm really close with from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. So we was having the movie premiere, and he's not even in the movie. So for some reason, he comes out there. You no, know, I didn't know him. I seen his man. I shook his hand and everything, bro. I had no clue who he was until somebody was like, oh, damn, Breezy, you don't know who that is? Mind you, I just was in jail all through the holidays where I got out about March. So everything that's going viral with him, I never seen and I never even paid attention to it. But somebody told me right then and there. So, you know, I see him, I shake his hand, he walk in the crib and shit like that. And once my homie was like, oh, you don't know who that is? Oh, why? Look him up. You finna be mad. So I, I stand on the porch for like 20 minutes and just watch that interview with Say Cheese where he was like, Bond is the devil or some weird shit. So that's the only thing I've seen at this point. So I just walk in the house on some cool shit. Like, you know, I'm, I grabbed me a wood, start rolling up. I purposely stood across from him. So it's something in between us because I know myself. So I was like, if I ask this old man a question, then he get crazy. I'm about to about to beat these niggas up here. But it was just like, I, I'm i like, you know, what you got against Chicago niggas? He stood there and just looked at me for a second too. Looked me up and down, sized me up and everything. He's smoking his blunt. He said, man, I ain't never seen a nigga from Chicago in my life, homie. I'm from Texas, I don't know. So I'm like, shit, well, I'm from Chicago and I'm BD and Vaughn, my homie. So what's up with that shit? Now I'm not knowing he done said all of this crazy shit though. like. He he didn't say some crap. He's very disrespectful. Well, well, yeah. I mean, in a new interview with academics that just uh, got released a couple of days ago, he said Charleston White says King Von deserved to die. And you feel me? I never seen none of this shit. I just seen the one interview that I got to watch right there. It basically almost in his presence. He's in the house behind me, mm -hmm. and I seen it. So I just wanted to ask some questions. So it was smooth. Though. It wasn't crazy or nothing. It was just like I asked some questions. He all. Uh, he he went from oh, I don't know nobody from Chicago. Then I'm like oh, I'm I'm BDM woo woo. He instantly got to some revolutionary shit like oh well y'all killing black people, y'all killing black people. We don't do that in Texas, homie. Ruh, 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 ruh. And I'm like yeah, what that shit you saying? Cool, but you you know you disrespecting somebody that 
we love deeply that people love. He got family, he got kids and shit. You speaking like you on some black empowerment shit, but you disrespecting another black man because of a way that you feel about him type shit. Like, you know, but he like, yeah, y'all, y'all killing black people. We don't do that. The bullets is for the revolution. Because they got like two or three little clips. They don't have the whole thing. They just got two or three little clips or whatever. And like, I respect the old nigga because he stood up for what he believed in. He basically like shit. I'm on some better than us shit, but I'm like, you can't be trying to better us if you disrespecting black people and bringing them down or whatever. Cool. So it got to the point the way he was just like, oh, he started getting a little too rowdy for me. Like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going I'm to I'm die what I believe in. Y'all killing black people. I'm against all gang members and, and I'll die for this shit. So I politely was just like, look, listen here, because they got a clip. I me telling everybody, like, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. And I'm telling them, like, these my people. I, so I tell them, like, these my people that you in this room with. These are respectable, older gentlemen. I don't want you to feel like they backdoed you and flew you out here to get, get fucked up or whatever. But when you see me outside of this setting, I'm just letting you know, man to man, that it's going to be a problem. Like, it, beyond this, is going to be a problem. So he get the man, I, I come to Chicago, book me. I mean, yeah, we gonna book you then. He just and watch how I show up with the whole sheriff's department. <laughs> so it's like he's a person that he's dangerous, bro. And he's dangerous for the fact that he'll throw a rock at you and then call the police on you. Well, he said he was gonna call the police on you. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. He let that be known the whole weekend. He, cause I was around him the whole weekend. Like he was in the same city, so it's like I bumped into him maybe twice or three times. We had a personal conversation the second day, and where he's basically like, "Look, homie, I'm from Texas. I don't understand nothing y'all got going on. Like I told you, I just be doing this for rappers. He's talking about let's let's do a podcast and sit down to have people understand and rah, rah, rah. like basically on some slick apologizing shit. But I was cool on that though. I'm just like, you know, get this nigga away from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep it at that. That's why he didn't do much. He ain't even say. He never even really mentioned me no more after that for a while. For a while. Because he cause he probably respect me because I came to him on some man-to-man -man shit. Like, the shit you doing wrong, bro. But I never seen that all that crazy. I seen that one little piece of that interview from Say Cheese. I never seen none of that crazy shit he said. I ain't going to lie. It, I would have had to... I would have fucked around and had to fight with myself to not do nothing to him if I would have knew he'd been saying all the shit that he was saying. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, he basically like, nigga, fuck y'all. Fuck everything y'all stand for. I don't give a fuck. Fuck y'all homies. Ooh, ooh, he just disrespectful. So it's just, I don't know. He didn't disrespect me to my face or none of that shit. But I, me personally, I wish I would have knew. Like, that he said majority of the shit that he said. I wish I would have knew before I even had that nice conversation with him. Cause I'm thinking he just said some little shit. I wouldn't even never even talk to him if I'd have knew he said all that shit. Cause anywhere it goes, when I was in Mississippi, I'ma go to jail for hitting the old man. Did that get on the internet and tell you all oh, shit. Yeah, I'ma do whatever, but I'ma get you locked up at the same time. So it's like I would have just had to be smart, but I probably would have just left though. I probably wouldn't even say, cause I was, I'm dolo. I'm in Mississippi. I'm the only nigga from Chicago down here. These my people and they flew him out here. There's some down South shit going on. He got his mans with him. You know what I'm saying? Like playing his security. And then they got other niggas that's on some security shit for him. Like, but yeah, I don't fuck that old nigga. He just, he a troll, bro. It's like, that's why nobody do nothing to him when they see him. Cause they know it's like, he ain't never killed nobody. He ain't never hurt well, nobody. He was, he was involved in the murder. Like, no, I'm saying, like, to us. He ain't never yeah. did nothing to us. Like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like 30 years ago. He you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, he, like, he ain't never did nothing personally. Like, the shit he's saying out of his mouth, that, that's just like, and then people was like, oh, you should have did this to him. You should have did this. You should have did this. Like, I didn't know he said half the shit, but that's just like somebody saying, like, you know, people, grandmas and granddaddies sit at home and, and, and talk shit about us all day. So that's like somebody saying like, oh, you just seen my grandma and she said, fuck your dead homie. Why you ain't slap her? <laughs> like, come on. I'm not an idiot, bro. I did enough jail time to know. And niggas like, fuck that. You supposed to went to jail for your homie honor. Nah. My Vaughn went to, went to jail for me at where he at because of what somebody said about me. Yeah. 
Like, you know, he probably would have, he would have, the way he moved, he had a bunch of niggas around him, so they probably would have whooped him. But that would have, if I, if I'd have had niggas around me that nobody knew and they couldn't pinpoint and shit like that, I would have never been there born to touch him. Like, to this day, if I see him, I'm not going to touch that old man. But if I got niggas around me that don't give a fuck about their life and it just want to crash out and I can't stop them from crashing, they going to fold that old nigga. They going, you know, but I would, I would try to stop him because it's still a senior citizen, bro. He's an old man. I still, I got yeah. respect. He's got one eye too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got respect for my elders because I still, I got all my grandmas, great grandmas. I got my dad in my life, moms, all that shit. So it's like, you know, I ain't, I would have never just been like, oh, yeah, whoop that old nigga. You punch that old nigga the wrong way, he going to die. Right. Right. I mean, because just recently, Soldier Boy tried to run up on him. You heard about that? I s now. And he ended up macing Soldier Boy. <laughs> but this Soldier Boy we talking about, though. Soldier Boy don't got no dead homies. He's not a gang member. Right. Like, you know, Soldier Boy probably was really finna walk up to that nigga and just, man, what you be on, man? Why yeah, you be but he was like 10 deep. Yeah, so Charleston White automatically in his head, mm -hmm. he probably, damn, I these some rappers. I probably said something about this nigga. So in his mind, he, I'm finna mace these niggas. And he did. Yeah, so that's exactly what he did. Well, I seen videos of him that whole weekend niggas was walking up to him, arguing with him. Like, so what's the point of doing that? I'm not about to do that with him. Like, me and him didn't even have no argument. We had a regular conversation where at the end, I just told him, like, yeah, you know, you see me outside of this setting, you know, just be prepared for whatever gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? But... That, that people just running up on that nigga. Like I just seen him on the back of a truck in his hometown and people yelling and arguing back and forth and he clutching his gun and shit like that. Like leave him alone, man. The more people pay attention to him, the more he's going to keep being important to people. He's not, that's like, that's why I didn't know who he was when I seen him because he's not important to me. I just got out of jail and when I'm on the internet, I ain't looking for no, what no old nigga said. Like he, 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 he close. It's over with him. So he, he got, he got probably twenty at at that. If, if that fifteen more year, the shit he doing, he ain't gonna have long. Cause he, he like God gonna see him for the shit that he, he's doing. So, well, uh, speaking of King Von, his birthday just passed yesterday. Yeah, and, and one of the the things that started to circulate was uh, Wooski uh, posted uh, some vegetable. ten year old tweets. Man. Vaughn was like, you're going to fall as well. Wooski's like, not before you. And Vaughn was like, we'll see. And he I, had to repost that. I mean, but Wooski, you saying that, do you you practically half dead, though. He did all that dissing and disrespecting people and shit. Now you still doing the same thing. Like, you half dead. You took a headshot. You ain't dropped a song since. You ain't been right. Oh, you got shot in the head? Yeah, Wooski got shot in the head. Okay, I must have missed that. At a funeral. At a funeral. Damn. 11 guns. But... You know what I'm saying? Like, he, okay, I, I do remember the story now. Okay, you feel yeah, yeah, me? Yeah, That's yeah. why, we, yeah, because you know, I was I was locked up personally when he dropped his little distance. It was getting big or whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's trolling though. Like, that's trolling. Like, Vaughn died in Atlanta. Yeah. For some whole other shit that ain't got nothing to do with Chicago. Right. And Vaughn was Vaughn. Everybody know. Like, Bond just wasn't no rapper. He was really what people portray him to be. So why are you on the internet posting shit, glorifying that he died before you? Yeah, I, I guess the, the thing that I don't quite understand is that how do you keep that anger alive for someone who's no longer here? Envy. You see what I'm saying? Like, okay, he's dead. Whatever contest y'all have had, you could say you've He's won. still, still rich you know? in him at the death. He's still rich in him. He's still feeding no, his mom and his kids he's and dead. his people. Yeah. Like, like you can't do You can't hurt his feelings anymore. You can't do anything to him. He want to, he want to hurt the people from O Block by saying that. Mm. But then like, Wooski, you don't be outside. You don't do none of that. So you putting other people in harm's way because now you're doing that. What if these people want to come and do something to your people because what you said, you know what I'm saying? Like, because that's a real beef. That's not fake. That's like, that's a real, real, like any, any real beef you can think of in the world, that's real. Like them, he from Eberhard and, and O-Block is on King Drive. That's literally fucking 20 steps away from each other. Wow. Literally. Like, yeah, we, like, like the beef we be having in Chicago, we literally, like, like my main, I'm from 600, so our main beef is with Ruger now. You know what I'm saying? They on 59th and State 
and Wabash. It's only two blocks in between us. And then we got all the rest of the territory going towards King Drive. Well, so we that close. So it's like we can really stand on, walk and stand in one street and look down the street and see them if they standing out there like that. Well, you're 31 now. Mm -hmm. You guys are beefing over territories that none of y'all even own. It's like who even who over. even owns like these buildings? Yeah. Everyone's renting. But it's not over territory though. Like people, I hear people say that a lot and they be like, oh, y'all beefing over territory. But it's not that. These beefs are hereditary. These beefs are for from death. So it might have started over territory, but I don't know because these beefs was there before I was even born and I was even thought of. So the thing is, you always going to have somebody cousin or brother or nephew or sister or whatever that want to avenge they lost loved one. You know what I'm saying? So... Say me and you, like, say me and you beefing, Vlad, and we don't really know what we beefing for, but it's really because, but like, oh, like, I know this, Vlad didn't, he didn't kill nobody, I'm just going to say it like this. Like, say you killed one of my, one of my cousins or my brother or some shit like that, and, or they saying you did it, and now, you if you some years older than me, but I get of a certain age, and now I'm in the streets, and I keep seeing you, I'm like, oh, this nigga killed my cousin, I got to get him. Or my friend, like... Like it'd it be like people that lost their best friends and and they family members or whatever, and that's really what's going on. It's not over blocks or territory. We're not making yeah. no drug money in Chicago. Yeah. That's where that come from. People think beefs and wars be over territory, like the old Italian mobs and shit like that. It's not that niggas is really beefing for no reason. Like they yeah. can't tell you what they're beefing for. They can just say, "Oh well, they." The, that set of people killed such and such and we going to step behind them and it's going to keep going. And, and I understand that. And, and I interview a lot of people in this life, you know, for, for example, like I interviewed Mob James recently and he told me something kind of interesting where he talks about how he got shot up with a shotgun by this 13 year old. Mm -hmm. Right. And I said, well, do you know who he is? He goes, no, but I know what, what gang he's with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, are you mad at him or do you, do you, did you ever want to find out who it is or get revenge? And he goes, no, because this, I was doing the same thing to their side and it's not personal. Yeah. So I don't care who did it and I'm not mad at him because I've done so much dirt myself mm -hmm. and it all just evens out. What, what, what set was he from? Do you know? He was from uh, Park Village. Okay. Yeah, Park Village. Do you know right. specifically who it is? Yeah. yeah. I knew who, what hood they was from. Okay, but you know, but did you know specifically who the kid was that no, shot you? No, I didn't. I so didn't to this day, you don't know who it is? No, it don't matter. Don't matter? No. Okay. Why would it matter? Shit, half of the motherfuckers didn't know I shot them. So, hey, fair exchange, no robbery. I mean, we all knew what we was getting into, what we was doing. Yeah. You know, now, there was a guy that killed his brother, Buntree, who they all knew, everyone was friends, and and the dude killed him allegedly, and and so forth. And he had he had to get over that. It took him a lot of years of anger and bitterness. But he was like, when it comes to gang shit, we shoot each other. And he's like, in his fifties now, he's like, it's it's whatever. We were all doing it to each other. You chalk it up to the game. I don't care who did it. If I ever found out, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. And and at some point. Don't you feel like everyone has to do that? Be like, look, we understand that our relatives and brothers and friends and whatever got killed, but we were all doing it to each other and we all have to just say, fuck it, if we ever want to get over this because the cycle is still going. Like, you know, every weekend, 50 people shot in Chicago, seven seven murders. Fourth of July, 80 people shot. Like, it, it, it's it's pointless at some yeah. point. And it's new and it's old beef. So it's like yeah. the old stuff and then it's new stuff that's happening with the younger generation, the next generation that's coming. But it's like nobody can... I don't never see it an end coming to it for the fact that like majority of everybody can come together and be like, all right, we done with this shit. We're going to squash it. But it's going to be that one sour apple out the bunch that's going to be like, fuck that. I know my big homie said we squashed it, but I'm going to go over there and kill these niggas while they got their guard down. Yeah. That's what happened with us. I was 15 Maybe when we we lost Devon, well, yeah, 
No, nah, I, I was probably like 17, 17, 18 years old. I was somewhere around that time, but we we squashed beef with the, our main ops. Like our big homies, my dad, uncles, all type of shit came together and made us squash the shit. We squashed it. But the next day, they end up killing my homie Devon. The next day? The next day. Wow. And I was there. I held him in his, in his dying last moments. You feel me? Yeah. Like. Nigga ran across the street, shot at me first. And then it was just like, it was two separate shooters. So it was just like shit going on. And I'm hearing other shots and not knowing that, you know, I'm running around the corner and I see my homie fighting for his life. You know what I'm saying? But in my mind, that's why I'm even standing on 61st and King Drive because that's the mid point for us. But we just, they just made us squash the beef yesterday. But they already had it set in their mind like, oh, we going to kill Shorty. So we had our guard down. And they came and did that. So, you know, just imagine how much that happened in Chicago already. Well, yeah, I mean, since our last interview, uh, this guy named KTS Dre was walking out of Cook County Jail mm -hmm. and he got shot 34 times. The rumor was 64. But it, it took the coroner like three months to even it, his figure out. probably came in and out. Yeah, so it, looked it like was just four shots. There were so and, many shots. And like, I literally, know, like me personally, I didn't like him. We had... Real beef, like he said he was gonna kill my son, my baby mama, all type of shit. That's just the type of nigga he was, though. But still, I don't feel like people deserve to go out heinous like that. But the shit that he was doing led him to that. Cause who wants you that bad that as soon as you bonding out from the Cook County Jail with all these police around, as soon as you walk out the door, it's like they put their freedom on the line, like, all right, well, we finna do this nigga right here. That was crazy. Like, that was crazy. So yeah, that's, that's, he a person, some people just bring that energy towards they self. You know what I'm saying? And he was a person that, that's what he did. He sat on the internet. He just went at people. Yeah, because he wasn't really a rapper, was he? No, he wasn't he a was rapper. He was just a street guy. I don't yeah. even know if he, but he, he was in the streets for real, though. I give him that. He was in the streets. He was definitely in the streets. I met him personally before. And before... We had beef. That's where the beef came from because I meet him at, at a family event with my baby mama and my son. And, you know, he's telling me like, oh, y'all be hanging with Lil Herb and them. We, they be on y'all block. We be lounging on y'all block with a hundred shots. And I mean, y'all not doing that because either y'all gonna get in a shootout or y'all gonna go to jail. You talking about you just sitting around with choppers and hundred shots and shit like that. So it's like, he didn't know me personally, but he just was like, oh, you know, Oh, it, but I knew his brother though. Um, Vaughn, KTS Vaughn. Vaughn and Vinny, they twins. I knew them personally before I had a beef with them too. Like I ended up having to fall out with them, and that's just what it was. Not even Vinny, he'd been in jail for a long time, but Vaughn. But he was trying to get me on the phone right there. Vaughn, I'm gonna call up, bro, man. Y'all, woo, 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 you know, chop it up. But it was like after we left that setting, he seen me around her and him again, and he was all oh, bitch ass nigga. Oh, I'm gonna kill your baby mama, kill your son, shit like that. Like, shit was uncalled for. So after that, I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm beefing with this nigga because you done threatened my child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. I mean, this, you know, I looked into his whole story. Uh, he had been arrested 22 times yeah. since 2008, and I believe his grandmother got shot in the oh, process. She, yeah, I ain't know all that. Yeah, a 60 year old woman got shot, and a second woman in her 30s. I think it's mother and grandmother or something mm -hmm. in the process. Oh, when he was getting bonded out, they probably was there to pick him up. They yeah, probably, niggas probably followed them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. ain't no telling. Somebody probably, oh yeah, we going to pick up Dre and told the wrong people. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, FBG Cash got killed since last time. Yeah, but like shit like that. Like, me personally, I don't really, like, I still throw little disses and shit in there sometimes when people diss me and I feel like I, I'm going to just, I just be in that moment. But Cash brung that shit on itself. You duck gone and somebody got to carry the torch for them. And you come in and you dissing. And you dissing and you dissing and you dissing and you dissing when you never was dissing before. And you just riding around Chicago with some females that you barely even know. And your face hotter than it's ever been. Like, I've been at that point to where nobody really knew me other than people in my neighborhood or people I went to school with. And I was cool and I could move around. And then I, I dropped Don't Get Smoke and I'm dissing niggas. Now I'm a rapper and I got millions of views in my face out there. Now I got niggas shooting at me that I've never seen in my life. 
because they probably friends or cousins or whatever with these people that I'm dissing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, you can't make yourself a target like that and be comfortable. You can never just be comfortable in Chicago like that anyway, because there's always something going on. But he was way too comfortable. You dissing and... You you just in the city and you moving around and, and you feel like you untouchable. That's when you get touched. Like you got to keep that paranoia on you. You got to be paranoid, especially you're a street nigga. It's not bad to be paranoid. Like you can't feel like you a, a bitch ass nigga or nothing because you got paranoia. That shit to be aware is to be alive. That shit going to keep you alive. So just yeah, cash. Like everybody was like, oh, it's so unfortunate. Like y'all see what he doing. I don't feel bad for people that call it upon they self. They bring it on they self. So no, it ain't just because he was from the other side. Oh yeah, I put none of that. I don't know him. Like he just, yeah, he, he brought that energy upon itself. Well, uh, Gucci Mane you know, ask rappers to stop dissing the dead in their lyrics, which is kind of ironic because not only did he, I won't say originated that shit, but he, I think, popularized mm. dissing the dead when he was talking about, you know, you know, told Jeezy, like, you know, go, go dig, dig up your, your partner, partner, but he won't say what, shit. I, what, I mean, and, what, and what, year what I was, was going to say though? is, was that? What year was that? Because I don't think Gucci started that, you know? Well, no, no, no. I mean, I know he didn't start it, but it's like, he was the first one in Atlanta that made it. Be, that yeah, really yeah. kind of popularized it. You know, I would say before the Chicago, you know, Chicago dudes popularized it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because he's older, mm -hmm. right? He's in his forties. Yeah. But what's interesting about Gucci is that not only did he come up with a song like that, but he actually performed the song to Jeezy's face <laughs> during oh, the verses. And, and, and talk. But this is what I'm saying though. Like, so when he says it, I'm like. You right message, wrong messenger kind of situation. Because like, and because I'm, I, me, per, I'm the biggest Gucci Man fan that every week. Like, yeah, you're talking about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, every I go on my phone right now, go to Apple. I have every mixtape that he's dropped from 2005 up to like his the prime Gucci, the the trapping Gucci, the right. the I sell chickens Gucci. I, that you know what I'm saying? So I know him like. And I just personally seen that song for the first time today in the Uber, or in a in a with the in a black truck, and they got the TVs on there, and we I'm playing the music, and then I see he say stop dissing and whatever. He's like, I, I'm the one that originated it. I just want y'all to stop dissing, and you know, I know my tongue is a sword or whatever. But it's not gonna it's gonna take somebody from Chicago. A few people from Chicago, because people gonna look at Gucci Man like, yeah, you ain't really. You wasn't smoking on niggas and shit like that. He did uh, in a verses was like, oh, I'm smoking Pookie Lope. Pookie Lope. Yeah, yeah, he even said that, right. He sent the sense of mom and sent him back to you in the box. But that was probably his first time being in front of Jeezy and he felt some type of way because if them niggas really tried to get him killed, the old Gucci, the old him, like he a grown man, he successful, he done did prison time, he married, he got kids and shit. But that old him was kicking in like these niggas tried to kill me, man. You feel yep. me? Like... So it's like, as a man, he like, all right, let me go ahead and put some sauce on that and try to hold this nigga a little bit because I already killed your homie and got away with it because it was self-defense. Mm -hmm. And it, you know what I'm saying? So it, he he felt like he was sending across from the nigga that, that set him up or whatever. So he, you know, he he was talking his shit, man. He was talking his shit, but. Yeah, I mean, because I've never seen like a Chicago rapper perform, it's talk about smoking a pack in front of the dude because we you know, can't we can't be in the same room like right. that it's gonna be before on the pull up it's gonna be shots fired in outside right because don't nobody really want to fight right like i me personally that's why i be telling niggas like we can box because i've been that's what i was known for before anything so i'm cool with that but people don't know how to take losses like they yeah. they they pride like as a man they pride be hurt especially you get beat up in front of your bitch or your mama or your kids or anything like that they probably be hurt so the first thing you're gonna do is oh i'm gonna kill this nigga and you can't really take that out their mind because they they hurt like damn i lost a fist fight as a grown man to another man or this nigga done slapped me or he did this and slammed me on my neck in front of my girl now she looking at me crack he could be like, I, I got to kill him. Like, that's just people's yeah. mindset. No, well, listen, I, yeah. I remember I lost a fight in high school. I, and, I, uh, I lost my first fight. Yeah, you know, I lost a fight right. in high school, and uh, I found out the dude committed suicide, so, you know, years and years later. And I remember I was like, 
thinking one day I might have still mad at this dude. I'm like, wait, what? I gotta check myself. I'm like, the dude's dead. Yeah, because when you, no, nah, you, when you yeah, heard he was dead, you was like, ah, bitch ass nigga. Like, <laughs> but, but but then I'm like, but he, I can't, I can't keep this anger going still because he's he's dead. Like, yeah. you know, I had to check myself, be like, yo, like snap out of it. Like, yeah. you're an idiot. You know what I mean? I'm like, stop it. He's dead. Cut it out. <laughs> but that was the. The better version of you talking to, yeah, I had to mature. The, exactly, I had to mature. I was in my thirties by that like, time. Like no matter how you go, get, you always gotta fight with your gotta mature fight, level yeah, with yeah, your immature yeah, self. They gonna always bump. It. Yeah, I mean, you know, Twenty One Savage recently, you know, did a tweet about telling Atlanta to put put their guns down, and people like and spin the block twice. Like I got no place to park. He's like, no man, that ain't got nothing to do with it. But it's like, yeah. Man, you got so many lyrics of shooting people. Like, you got so many lyrics. And you've got a history of, you know, gunplay and shit like that. Yeah. Once again, you know, right message, wrong messenger. It's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, especially since the lyrics are still reflecting that to this day. Yeah. And it's like, he's like, oh, well, that's just entertainment. But it's like, N it is and it isn't. Because people are, it's affecting people. But it's just like video games. You feel me? Like no, it's not. No, like, no, 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 no. It's like, not. Now it's look not. at video look, games aren't based on people's actual lives and reality. It's a video game. It's a movie. Now there's a script. But but, but so that the script that, is written so, by someone so, else. So that means that you saying all rappers are telling the truth, which is not true. They it, cap it majority it, of right. cap. Some a lot of rappers rapping about killing and drug dealing or whatever. They ain't never sold a bag and they ain't never heard a gunshot go off in their ear to make their ear ring. You feel me? Like so, right? But but Gucci and Twenty One Savage are not one of those two. Yeah, yeah you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like I mean, these guys are actually, you know, they come have from a history of this type yeah. of thing. They're not, you know, studio gangsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've interviewed I've interviewed Twenty One Savage, and you know we have interviews with Gucci. Like he has a history of this type of thing. So saying that, unless you totally, you know, unless you've totally turned the page and said, "Listen, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm just going to talk about conscious lyrics and stuff like that." I've learned there are my ways, but you know, man, listen, shit like that fires people up. I mean, it's a soundtrack to people's lives. Like I remember I interviewed No Malice from the Clips, mm -hmm. and he was like. He turned born again Christian. He and he started. And he's like, yo, how many, how many people have had their head blown off listening to the clips? Mm. And it started to affect him, as a man and as a Christian. He's like, I can't keep justifying this both ways. I have to choose a side. Yeah. And my side is okay. Now I'm going to call myself no malice, and I'm not going to rap about this shit anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's like with that too. It's like. Even when you got a long category of bang, bang, shoot them up, and this is what we did in the streets. Even when you trying to switch over, you're going to have them people that's always going to be, oh, but you said this. And no matter how you trying to change, they yeah. still going to throw the past in your face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the internet's the devil. <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I get I, it. Oh, I, I get it. it. But, but we're, it. All, yeah. we're all men and we all have to, you know, ultimately answer to ourselves and ultimately take responsibility uh, for our actions. Yeah. NBA Young Boys manager did a tweet and he said that uh, Young Boys' first stop is going to be in Chicago. <laughs> and you responded to that. Yeah, I told him to bring them dirty dicky suit wearing niggas. That's just like, you know, like... And people are saying you're talking about Quando Rondo and, and Lil' Tim. Uh, of course. Right. Cause we ain't no. What's the problem with NBA Young Boy? Like everybody, you know, like whatever he got going on with Dirk Nim and shit. That's industry shit, bro. The Young Boy ain't do shit to nobody. He didn't, you know. He went there when that shit happened with Vaughn. Right. So it's like, you know, I shouldn't have even said shit, but it just be like when I seen them, they it's like they be playing, they be doing too much playing on the internet. So I'm like, I right, know nah, if you niggas don't come to Chicago, just bring them certain group of niggas, though. I mean. Do you think the young boy could do a big show in Chicago and have it no. be okay? You don't um, think but so. no, this is why he can be okay if he do a show in Chicago. Like, just realistically, he NBA young boy. It's going to be a state. He's statement. a multi, multi-millionaire. Yeah. He's going to have security with him. He's never going to come to Chicago with just his people. No. He's, they, they're going to have security, armed security, like... Probably police. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. So if somebody want to bump heads with him, they got to be able to throw it out. They got to be ready to throw it all away and be like, he got the police with him. But fuck that. 
I, I want this nigga. And they got to be able to, that real, like the real definition of crashing out is for them to try to do something to young boy if he have a show in Chicago. Because you got to think about it like this. Motherfuck, one of, Chicago is one of his biggest fan bases. Mm, People yeah. love that nigga. Yeah. So, because let's be honest, like a lot of people was listening to him before the beef. They got niggas from my side listening to his music in a car and all this shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Because he come from the same shit we come from. Baton Rouge, just like Chicago, is treacherous. Murders, gang shit, that's what's going on. So, if he can, it's possible for him to come to Chicago and come in and make, look, 6 9 did it. Well, yeah. I mean, remember when Drake and Meek Mill were beefing, Drake did a huge show in Philly. I was with and him. Even, oh, you were with him. I was with him. <laughs> and he even talked shit about Meek on stage. Yeah. And he walked out just fine. Yeah. I mean, them, people were all in the distance. Like, oh, yeah, this motherfucker. I, rah, rah, rah. I give it to D. You know, Drake, my boy, and I fuck with Meek. Meek, them DC niggas pulled up. They couldn't do shit, though. This is right. Drake we talking about. Yeah. Like, hey, watch out. Y'all came to... To say something, you know what I'm saying? But From a distance. Who was going to crash out and go to jail for the sake of what? Because they had a rap beef going on. Ain't nobody got hurt. Ain't nobody got punched, slapped, shot, nothing. So they was going to pull up and try to do something to somebody in Drake Cap at home, too. Just to, to what? For a look? They, you know, they smarter than that. Meek's a smart nigga, too. Drake and Meek, they smart. So it was just like, I was there for it and I seen it. But like, yeah, I've like, young boy can possibly come into Chicago untouched, but he has to have law enforcement with him. There's no way that he's coming to Chicago with just his homies and nothing's going to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, he's going to do a huge show. Yeah, at it's a stadium. Probably, it's more than likely it's going to be at the United Center. At the United Center. And he going to have security. They going to have police there just because they know he coming. The mayor or whatever. Heavy, heavy police at present. Mm -hmm. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Heavy. Like, they probably won't even let him do the show in Chicago because they know what's going on. They probably, like, realistically, they wouldn't let young boy do a show in Chicago because they know what's going on type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, mean, I guess we'll see. Like, I don't, I don't think they, they was capping. They was just doing that for the net. They're just talking and stir it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, whatever this young boy, little jerk beef is about. I don't know if it's about a girl or or what. But the amount of death and destruction that had happened between the shit, because people compare it to the Tupac and Biggie situation, I personally think it's worse. I think cause it's it's gotten more it's, deadly. It's way worse. Yeah, it's way worse for the fact that. We even closer to each other. Tupac and Biggie was New York and L.A. Even though Tupac is originally from Baltimore and New yeah. York area and shit. He, right. You know, but he chose his side with them and that's what it was. It was like a record label versus record label. It was shit happening when they bumped into each other. This is way different because it started off automatically on street shit. Vaughn would have been bigger than Dirk. Let's just be honest. Look how fast he moved, how fast he was going. Dirk been rapping since 2019. You know what I'm saying? He just became the Dirkio that everybody knows. Vaughn just got out of jail from beating murders. He just sat in the county jail. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Was living in a hellhole and came home and boom. He been King Vaughn, but he came, he became King Vaughn to the world. Yeah. So he would have been bigger than Dirk because he was moving too fast, too quick. Yeah, I, I just think a lot of it, man, is just just egos. Like, you know, like Lil Dirk on his last album said, said I don't fuck with Vlad. And I'm like, really? Because I've always supported Dirk. I pulled up, you know what I mean? We've hung out together. Like, yeah. we, I did all his early interviews. Yeah. We, we've we had long conversations and everything. And I'm like, I don't even know what it's about. They, they, but they I'm like, but why, but why, you know, like, you, you could call me. You could hit me. Uh, but it's like, but why are you saying that though? They paint a picture of you is to be in a police. So okay. I just sat in front of you three times. Yeah. You ain't never did no police shit. You ain't never asked me no police ass questions like, oh, I heard this person got shot and they said you was around. Or oh, how many bodies do you got? Or oh, you never did none of that Dirk, shit. Dirk me. knows me, man. Like, like, Dirk, Dirk knows me. And when I heard that, it, it, it hurt my feelings a little bit because I was just like, Whatever it is, you and I have hung out together. Mm -hmm. And I'm not at all that type of person. There's no, I'm not going to go and try to do anything, whatever. You you know who I am. I'm a lot older than you. But to put that kind of energy out there, I felt was just unnecessary. 
yeah. especially on your album, on your record. It's like a per one of your permanent pieces out there because you know I have no no ill will towards you at all. Yeah. But but to create these types of bad feelings or whatever else, who knows? You know, I mean, I got fans just like everyone else. I don't know what the fuck these fans going to do, and I don't want them to do nothing. But you're, you're creating, you know. Remember, he said, "Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to stop dissing my ops and stop dissing the dead and everything else like that." You know. But I feel like yo, you were so big at this point. You're, you're. He sold out the United Center, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yo, you're so big that people aren't fucking with you because you're doing this. You actually make good music. Drake fucks with you. Like everyone fucks with you. You don't need this type of energy anymore. And even if you don't fuck with me anymore, you know, it's not necessary to to put that on a record. And you could also have a conversation with me because I've always been open to having a conversation mm -hmm. with him. I still to this day don't even know what what that line came from. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it, it sort of hurt me a little bit because I'm like, I thought we was you cool. Like, yeah, it was cool. You're like, I thought we was cool. Was like, I remember there's a picture well, of us in front of my Maserati in LA on Sunset Boulevard chilling, taking pictures together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but like, that's... you know, our last interview was a dope ass interview. Like he used to tweet me. So I would retweet it. So then we do interviews afterwards. Like it was that type of thing. I, I supported him early in his career and, and it doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, other people aren't going to take it like I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do shit. But other people are going to be like, oh, we're like, let's escalate things. Let's start dissing you back. Let's start, you know, yeah. getting into dumb shit. And then now That's certain a, people can't you work with other people. You could have been like, oh, shit, I'm beefing with Lil Durk, so it's going to make my platform just a little bit more bigger. And you could have been like, fuck Lil Durk. Yeah. I was with him. We could have, like, you yeah. could, you know what I'm saying? You could have did any of that, but yeah. you, you but, was but personally on some damn. I was like, like, damn, like, yeah. I, I like you. And I'm actually happy for your success. And I've supported your success back when you weren't, Durkio, like you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's one of those things where sometimes people just put it, you know, kind of like put it upon themselves to create this type of negative energy, which ultimately doesn't work out in the long run. Mm -hmm. When we could all just fuck with each other. You know, I'm pretty sure that if Dirk and and Young Boy got in the same room and spent the day talking to each other, they could probably work it out. Or at least just say, okay, we understand each other's point of view. Me and Emily Chopper were going at it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I seen that. Then and, I and seen we got together. on the phone. But I ain't gonna lie, the Dirk and Young Boy shit is never going. You don't think it's ever gonna work? Never, out? Ever, ever, ever. Well, listen, me and Chopper were going at it. Academics put us on the phone together. He came in. We did an interview. We hugged it out. Yeah, but you know? that's that's in Emily Chopper though. That's a different type of. He's a he's a young man that. He was involved in some shootings and some and, bullshit and but, all that. He's you, not he's not a he, pushover. But he changing early though. Like this he's is definitely true. he ain't this no whole ass nigga nothing, but yeah. he doing differently faster than you see other. It used to take rappers 10 years to do that. Yeah, he's evolving quick. He's, and, and and honestly, by us getting together, everyone was like, yo, this is great. Yeah. Like, like we're applauding both of you. You look all through the comments, like, yo, both of y'all handled this yeah. great. You know, and, and everyone's like, yo, we really, like, Emily Chopper went up a few n notches by doing that. Yeah. People were like, yo, I didn't know this guy before this interview, but I'm going to go check out his music right now. For real. Yeah. And, like, and me and him still text and talk, and, it, and it's cool. And we, you know, we go on. It, but but y'all, it wasn't, that wasn't real beef. It was right. some minor it was just words some, over yeah, the Yeah, it was just some words over the internet. You got to think, internet. young boy even went out his way to this Dirk's fiance and Dirk this his uh, young boy favorite baby mama. So when you, we men here, when the pussy get involved and especially the pussy that you care about and love and shit, that's like a super deal breaker. Then before that, Vaughn died at the hands of young boy's minions. So that's never going to be no, oh, they cool or whatever. Yeah, but Vaughn was also the aggressor. Vaughn was you the gotta, aggressor. And you got you to gotta put that into the equation. But Vaughn was the aggressor for things that people don't know. Like, I personally know shit that the internet don't know, but everything ain't from the internet. Okay. And when I first, got out, that, when yeah. I first got out of jail, you know what I'm saying? Like, I supposed to not like young boy because I was with a female that he fucked with and Vaughn calls me like my homies can vouch for me but call him he called me from just blow phone and 
Young boy is opposed to call him and told him, oh, yeah, yo, homie over there with my bitch. I'm finna send some niggas over there to shoot the crib up. Talking about me. I ain't been out of jail for two, three weeks. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really. So I'm damn. Feel me? Vaughn called me concerned. I swear to God. He called me concerned. Bro, man, why you, where you at? You with some hoes or something? So, oh, he walked off. He, man, this bitch ass nigga just called and said, we're real. So young boy been doing shit behind the scenes. Yeah. Like picking with people that shit, people don't. So to his fans, he's just like, oh, like that's young boy. We love him. He don't do no wrong. But he doing little shit. So you can't just say Vaughn the aggressor. Well, I meant that particular night. That, that, oh, yeah, with the clump, but that particular you night. People don't know about that situation either. It's a lot of stories saying Kwando was in Asian DM after he was just with Vaughn and videos and, and buddy and buddy listen, kicking I, I it. Seen, that's I disrespect. seen the studio picture of Vaughn hanging out with uh young boy's baby mother. Yeah. You know, and and a lot of this shit, man, like <sighs> It, it just gets it gets frustrating to watch it all over and over again. And it's a lot of times it's teenagers or dudes in the early 20s. And it's just like, none of this shit's worth dying for. I don't care. Yeah, not, you know, I mean, like, like I, you can't, like, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Right now, as we sit across the, across the room from each other, there is nothing that you could say out of your mouth that'll make me physically hurt you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You could say the most foulest shit. You can get some inside info. You could talk about my dead father. You could talk about whatever else. Because you you beyond that, though. You bigger. Yeah. Than. There's nothing. Nothing can come out of your mouth. That's a level of maturity that nothing, some people don't nothing, have. Nothing. 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 Yeah. Because I'm I a man just like you. Yeah, because I right? can't say that. Because I because if I ain't gonna reverse, you say something about my kids or anything, whatever. You see what I'm saying? I'm, but for me, you know what I'm saying? For like me, you, you there like, is nothing you could utter. Yeah, you got nothing. too much to lose, too. You look at it like that, too. Like right. you got too I'm, much I'm 49. To lose. You know what I mean? Exactly. I got 20 employees. Like, you know what I mean? I, I understand that, like, I, and it's just words, man. It's just fucking words. And unless you've done some serious physical damage to me, and even then, I think a lot of that shit could get worked out. Because at the end of the day, I understand, like, I've, I've I've hurt people before, you know, badly in, in my, you know, when I was younger. I've fucked people up. I've caused permanent damage to people. Like, I, I get it. And and I've talked, to, talked it out with some of those people before. We've understood, like, okay, it was a fucked up situation. Yeah. And and shit happened. And, and none of us are happy that, that this happened, but we're all going to go on with our lives. And, you know, I, I just don't want to keep posting RIPs and talking about this shit over and over again because it's like... It's, it's sad. It's sad. Um, Larry Hoover recently uh, renounced his gangster disciple affiliation. He been really did that, though. He said, uh, regardless, these people are apart from me and do what they do with zero encouragement or direction for me. To be clear, if I had any ability to influence them, I'd ask them to forget me and forsake the gang life forever. I have long since renounced my association with and any all criminal organizations and their membership. I'm no longer a member, leader, or even an elder statesman of the Gangster Disciples. I want nothing to do with it now and forever. He he been really did that, but nobody heard him. He did that when he first got locked up in the 90s and shit, and they, you know what I'm saying, and they switched it from Gangster Disciples to growth and development and shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. And, you know, and I tell people like this all the time, I'm like, y'all steady out here. Uh, Larry Hoover this, Larry Hoover that, but that man trying to get that time back. He didn't personally kill nobody, but they, the shit that like, they keep denying him for what's going on in the streets right now. And he ain't been in the streets in how many years? 40, damn, 30, 40 years. So it's like, yeah. they saying like, oh, you started this, but that's like, they can't keep doing that to him. And he's don't got nothing to do with it. He been, he's on what 23 and not, like he don't he's get no he's an adx you feel me so he he's in he's in there with like terrorists and so they label him a terrorist yeah and you know what i'm saying like he don't want to he's trying to get his time back at least be able to come home for five ten years and enjoy his family you know what i'm saying yeah and they keep denying his motions because of what's going on in the streets so he's fed up to the point the way he had to put it that way i don't want nothing to do with you niggas but he been said that it was supposed to be no more Gangster Disciples, GDs after like 97, 98, some shit like that. But people still claiming it though. And they still, oh, we GD this, GD that, free yeah. Larry. You used to be a GD. Yeah, but I wasn't a real GD though. You feel me? Your dad, your dad so was it was GD. like, yeah. it was like I was a kid 
and everybody, you, it's just like how people with crips and shit like that. Like a young kid going to see they people banging crip and wearing blue and they going to start, yeah, crip cuz and don't know shit. I don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so at one point in Chicago, everybody was GD because it's just like right now, Larry telling people, oh, I don't want nothing to do with this, but still and always still people, thousands and thousands of people that still going to say, oh, I'm GD. Even the day Larry said that it was somebody that decided that it was GD that day and don't know no literature, don't know what it stand for, don't know nothing. They just want to throw up the rakes and be like, they GD. That's a, a point where I was at when I was 12, 13 years old and shit like that. But like a lot of people do that shit. But when I start really, 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 Getting into it, and I'm in the streets. I'm damn. We in tour with all the GDs. So I'm now. I'm looking at my daddy, and I'm like, damn, what's up with y'all? But I ain't understand it, like, cause it ain't really that shit. Don't really matter. So just how easily I was claiming that shit when I was a kid. That's how people doing now, and they look bad on Larry Hoover. Yeah, I mean, speaking of GDs, uh, King Lil J got sent back to prison for a gun charge. The fuck, dude. <laughs> he got right out and and just. Mentioned me in his first song out. Oh, he did? Oh, uh, yeah. He said, what did he say word for word? If, if that was me in the mall, I would have beat the Goofy. Like, bro. Like, I can't say what I want to say about him because you know how that community feels. And they're going to be like, oh, he's trying to disrespect him. But he, all history, credibility, been gone. And all that shit he be talking about and whatever. That shit, you know. And the fact that he went back to jail that fast... That that surprised me, considering because he he did. I interviewed him in prison some he years just back, did like seven years. Yeah, he did a long stretch to come out, while out, and then get caught with a gun and get sent I'm right back. Egg Literally a couple months, right you after like me? three months, maybe. I'm walking on eggshells. If I got my freedom back and I was just in Cook County Jail for all of that time, this one of the most treacherous jails that you could ever ever. I'd have been in the house fucking. <laughs> I've been getting some pussy, bro. No cap. I'd have been with my kids and, and fucking and trying to get some money. And he already got it, but he he got out. Like, God do shit for it. Like, certain things happen for certain reasons. And God locked him back up because he probably didn't want him to die. He probably ain't his time to die. Like with Vaughn. Like, people don't understand this. Like, you know, on the way to the hospital and all that shit, he was okay. Like, move up and them and all that. Like, you know, they would tell you, like, Vaughn was cool in that car. He wasn't a dying man in the car on the way to the hospital. So when he died, it was just like, what? I feel like God felt like Vaughn didn't deserve to go to jail forever. Because you know that Rico, that old block Rico, Vaughn was the head of that. So when they, the people they got now, Vaughn would have been the face of that case. And they would have just threw duck murder on him and did all that shit. And now Vaughn set all his time to come home and become a superstar just to go back to jail forever. I don't feel like that was, I don't feel like he deserved that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, God called him home. He probably, it probably was a situation to where, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? He don't deserve to be in prison forever. So, you know, he, he left his mark on the world, so just come with me, type shit. Like, well, so with Lil J, I feel like he back locked up because she it wasn't his time to die. Cause that that's what was gonna happen. You went Chicago and you dissing niggas again, like, you know, that that's just what's gonna that's what's gonna come with it. See, you had to have a gun. Like, you can't not have a gun. You out dissing and shit, but you also on parole and shit like that. So now you gotta finish your parole time and you got a new charge. Or he could have just moved out of Chicago and just that too, settled but, down but somewhere on, else where you don't have to carry a gun. He on papers and shit though. So, but that well, don't but mean they, nothing because I transfer. Right, you shit can do every a transfer. Time. Yeah, exactly. I transfer every time. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Just do so, a transfer. So, and then I was I, my case is in Iowa. And I was transferring back to Chicago, and then I transfer out of Chicago to somewhere else. Yeah. But yeah, like he that that's on Lil J. He he obviously not an intelligent person, bro. Just the shit he doing and how he moving or whatever. You know, like. You got to learn sometime. Like, I ain't never got out of jail and went right back. I'd be out for two years or some shit like that, and then some weird shit happened, violation or some shit like that. But I'm not putting myself in harm's way like that to where, like, damn, I just got out and shit. Fuck that shit. I'm throwing rocks at the penitentiary again. If I go back, I'll go back. Hell no. Ain't no pussy in there, bro. Like, yeah, you can't see your kids. None of that shit. Like, people don't know how it feels to, to have to separate from your kid at a visit. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I damn near went to the hole because I'm coming down the hallway. I'm in a minimum prison at this time, and my daughter is running to me to come hug me, and I damn near got in trouble because I didn't let them pat me down first before I seen my daughter. This is my baby, two years old. She she seen her daddy, she ain't seen me in months, and she ran to me. Like, so I had to, I flipped out on the bitch ass nigga. Ooh, ooh, you get to go home every day. And they're like, you know, like, like it, it, people don't know how it feels until like they really go through it. So like, I don't, I don't see how people go right back to jail like that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You know, as someone that's had a lot of violent lyrics over the years, when you look at the YSL Rico case with Young Thug, Gunner, and 28 people total, none of them have bond. And when you, I've read through that 88 page indictment, their lyrics are all through this indictment. Their social media posts all through their indictment. And, I and the fact that. that there's no bond and the young thug is probably facing 30, 40 years. Like yeah. they're really throwing the book. But it's a state Rico. It's not federal. It's a state Rico, which is a so little different. I mean, there's less, different. less resources. And but, less, but, but Rico is too, really a very scary word. Yeah, it's it's cause racketeering, like right. shit. It's just association. Like, like, you know, I, I remember we interviewed uh, you know, this former uh Queen Pin BMF associate, uh Brandy Davis. She was saying the most heartbreaking thing that she saw in prison was like there was a girl in there who got like six years because her boyfriend was a drug dealer. And they proved that some of his drug money was being used to pay her rent and some of her bills and she and stuff knew like that. that he was on drugs. So yeah, and she was like a work regular like working that. person. She had a job, whatever else. But since they proved on some Rico shit that hey, mm -hmm. you knew about this drug money, it's a conspiracy. It's you a knew. conspiracy. You knew. I, like my first, my charge was a drug conspiracy. I walked into an open case. I just took my weight for what the work I had on me, mm -hmm. and was like, I don't know these niggas. See what I'm saying? Like, I just, you feel me? I just caught me with him. But the, when the feds walked in the room, they said, man, you low man on the toilet pole. Who the fuck are you? We haven't even seen you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm the only one in the house that got drugs on me. Now they're trying to take my drugs and split it up, but I'm man them out. So I'm like, nah, that's that's, that's all, all me. I had this it. amount. You know what I'm saying? That's it type shit. But yeah, that, that conspiracy, that's how it works. It's, it's really you being an associate. Like, say me and you friends, right. and I'm a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. And... They gonna put you in a conspiracy too, cause they see you with me every day, so they gonna feel like no. Nah, but right. you knew what they was doing. You, he's running a criminal enterprise, and you knew. Right. So you ain't, call, and they look at it like you ain't called us to tell us to stop that nigga. So we gonna give you some of that time too. Right. If I knew that you were doing illegal shit and we were associating with each other, I can get caught up in that shit. Mm -hmm. This is why when I interview people, I don't want to know what anything you're doing right now. Yeah. Like, you know, if you did some shit 10 years ago, you know, and you did your jail time, it's past statute limitations, yeah, like, we can talk about yeah, it, but like, like if you I don't want to know about already. Yeah, I don't want to know. But, like, if you leave here and do some other shit, do not tell me about it. And they come I back like, yeah, know. I just popped the nigga. Blast holes on left. You heard some shots out there? Yeah, that was me, fool. <laughs> but right. I mean, when you heard the YSL shit, and I, I've never quite seen anything to this extent. Not, not that many people with lyrics being used. You know, and let me listen, Boosie's had his lyrics used in his murder trials and so forth. But like, do that scare you a little bit? Like shit. Man, nah, I ain't gonna lie. I say this shit a lot. And I tell my homies and them and shit, I say, man, we lucky that Chicago had they run with the, the feds and the conspiracies and shit. Cause oh, it wouldn't be no rappers from Chicago out today. They had all us. Everything was in them videos and whatever. Whatever you see, what they doing with YSL, they could have easily did that with us. But Chicago is different. The laws is different. It's different shit. Other than Georgia, that's Georgia they in. That's really like some Jim Crow ass state. It's a lot. It's way different than Chicago. Like I be telling people, we didn't have to deal with racism growing up. Well, but it's a black right. DA. A black female DA. Is the oh yeah, but <laughs> she, you know, you can't even say she. They, they want racism. Wanna, they want to better their community. Yeah. So. She looking at it like, oh, I'm taking these thugs off the street. You know what I'm saying? But that shit be fucked up to me because, like, all right, y'all trying to pinpoint, y'all going out your way to pinpoint the bad shit, but what about all this good shit that thug is done and what he's doing? Y'all yeah. trying to pinpoint all this bad shit, and just because, oh, they YSL and there was a gang, and okay, they turned YSL into some legit shit. And they doing good now. He's selling out shows and he niggas ain't dying at thug shows and shit and shit happening like that. They went and did too much and just focused on them and was like, all right, we're gonna get them off the streets. Then she like, oh, I got and then she just uh just oh, I got two more big Ricos coming. Yeah. 
I got two in the next 60 days. I got two more. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like it's scary. That's it's scary. scary. Shit. And, you know, like we went carefully, you know, me and um, you know, a guy named George Sheedy, like he was this big um journalist in L in uh Atlanta that basically broke down the whole case. Like Gunna really didn't do shit. Gunna, Gunna didn't do Gunna, nothing. Everyone in that case, Gunna is really just getting hemmed up. For just, just being around. for being YSL, just for being YSL. But he, that's a record label, and they right. need to understand. But they like fuck that. It started as a gang. That's yeah, how they're saying at. he's a gang leader, and I'm like, not gonna. Like, okay, some of these other dudes, okay, I, I, I kind of get it. But the gunner shit is they, like they know they no bond. To, he can't even come home on an ankle monitor and sit in his nothing. house. They, you feel me? And he in there sick pictures. I see of him. Yeah, I'll be. Bad, I feel yeah. bad for him. Like damn, bro. Because you got to think he out here a multi millionaire living his life. He probably he probably withdrawing from the drugs. He doing this shit. Yeah. His mind probably fucking him up. Like damn, what they often to do? 10, 20 years. I just I'm, I was just fucking one of the baddest bitches in the game and doing it. Right. And now I'm about to. You know what I'm saying? Like that's fucked up. You know. What yeah. Saying, especially for him to not do nothing, but they are hold on to niggas like him and try to get him to crack. Right. I mean, Boosie in our interview said that uh, you can't shake 28 eggs and expect none of them to crack. No, I swear to God. And, but and but they already were saying that somebody was already telling Well, yeah, them. they're already doing proper agreements. People yeah. are going to start turning on each other. And, and it's going to be interesting because it's like, listen, Takashi went and told on everyone and had somewhat of a career coming out, hmm. right? His music still, you know, he can go overseas or whatever else. But Takashi was never viewed as a street rapper. Exactly. He was a pawn. Yeah. Like he, Young Thug is, though. Like, if Young Thug, Thug cooperates against everybody and comes back out, I don't think he's going to have a career anymore. No, no, he can't do that. Yeah. He not gonna, he's not going to do that because I know Thug personally. And, you know, like, people, you know, like, just the little shit. They all oh, he wearing dresses. He gay, this and that. I be arguing with people like, nah, yeah, I don't know Thug. I know that nigga personally. Right. He, you feel me? That shit is just, I feel like that's just to get him where he was at. Yeah, but like, but you do know him personally, but when someone tells you 40 years, 50 years. But they got him as the head, so who you going to tell him? They, they, even if he was to sit there and, and put the blame on everybody, that's not going to work because he is the head of that case. They want him. Yeah, but but they also, the actual violence themselves did not, it was not physically done by him. Exactly. They're trying to say, oh, he Larry, Larry called Larry Hoover. that a murder occurred. Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover didn't do none of that shit. Right. They gave him life for murders that somebody else committed because yeah. they were saying that he. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be ugly. And it's like, you know, you could say, listen, I know this dude, he's solid. But when you talk about the rest of your life in prison and it's like, okay, well, the alternative is I tell on everyone and I got to abandon my career, but at least I have my freedom and I got some money to just go move somewhere and just live out the rest of my life. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't. We're all humans at the end of the day. Not too many humans will sit there and, and swallow life in prison over their principles. Not for real. Just, just, especially once they, when once they throw that rich. out there and they be like, well, you got this life without the possibility of parole. Right. And then people get the eye, right, right, but... The, the, like it's the people that's gonna be around him and they gonna be him they want him so no matter what he say they not gonna be listening to it they gonna look at all the other people and be like yeah we 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 work for him and he told us just please give us leniency and 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 I'll tell it if y'all give me you know what I'm saying immunity and this and that like I just seen all of this shit happen before so it's like it's just a fucked up situation and then Atlanta and this ain't like hood rich Pablo Juan good friend of mine he got a Rico in Georgia, been gone on a Rico before Lucci and them shit. This ain't like Georgia is yeah. like it's scary because like Atlanta is one of the 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 centers of hip hop for for the for the last few years. Like it's one for of the few bigger years, last like twenty years. That, that's why yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so they, they never dropped that they, torch. They they taken all of the people that's the bigger people out that they do it with New York. And shit, they be giving out gang because like all them little drill artists that's coming up, they done locked yeah. all them niggas up. Yeah, I mean Casanova's locked up right now. You he's, know what I'm saying? He's awaiting a sentencing. Uh, I mean Bobby just got home, Rowdy just got home, but that GS9 shit. I mean they took out like twenty they whole people. crew. Yeah, and them niggas wasn't telling. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I respect GS9. Mm -hmm. Like, because they, that's really one of the, um, I didn't, you didn't hear nothing about them. Oh, such and such told or such and such told all of them. It took they hits on the chin. Because they real niggas and they knew what they was doing. And they know they couldn't come back from that. And it's, it's just like in Chicago, you can't really, they couldn't move around in their prison systems and be okay knowing that you're a snitch and shit like that. So, yeah, I respect GS9 because I really heard nobody on they. They, you know, nobody telling. Yeah. Like, Doug them been locked up. They was locked up for a few days, and they, oh, well, they said, look, they, they, I don't know how true it was or what they was trying to say, like, Yak Gotti, and they was trying to say a few other people was telling. Like, it's just, it could be fake news or whatever. Well, but, yeah. No, I don't think that they were saying Yak Gotti was telling, but there's 28 people. Yeah. And uh, some of them are not even really rappers. Yeah, no, they, no, they threw some names out there, but it's just the internet. So I don't believe shit until yeah. I really see the <laughs> real black and white with a nigga government on it and shit like that. Or so I'm just not gonna throw that jacket on nobody. Yeah, but, I mean, listen, I, I hope it yeah. works out. You know, not for um, real, because because I hope Thug it works out. I, I've interviewed, I've never met Thug, but like I've interviewed YFN Lucci, you know, a couple times, and, and he got his Rico before Thug. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's all fucked up. It's a it's a You would have never fuck. expected this shit. Though. Yeah, I would have you know never expected it. Like, and uh like I said, I hope it works out. I hope, you know, somehow get out of this without throwing everything away yeah. in the process. It's because I do like their music. And like I said, I know some of these dudes and it's 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 unfortunate. But yeah. you know, it also teaches you that be careful what you say on social media. And on your songs, you See, can't just, just say it's, oh, it's all black art, you know, protect black art. It, you know, it's all going to be used against you. And, you know, if you talk about if someone's mom gets shot and you have a lyric about shooting someone's mom. Exactly. They're going to be like, well, you know what I'm saying? Connect the dots. And, and, and you, you could try to argue it, but it's, it's a hard argument to, an, you know, a bunch of middle aged people in the jury who don't know about rap music and are just being presented the story. Just is what it is. And. I think it's going to shift gangster rap to a certain degree because I think people are now seeing real ramifications of their words and they can't just say, oh, it's just lyrics. It's like, nah, this has been happening forever. Like since the 80s, yeah. people's lyrics have been used against them. You just don't hear about it as much because there's no social media out there. But, you know, from the X-rated from Sacramento you know, in the 80s to Boosie in the 2000s, mm -hmm. it's all, it all kind of comes together and whatever criminal shit you've ever done, keep that shit completely out of your lyrics, completely out of your social media posts, completely out of your interviews, if you're still doing it and if you're somehow still connected to the shit. Mm -hmm. You know, Jay-Z could talk about it because past that shit limitations. That was you feel me? Yeah, he... You know, and if you've done your jail time, then go ahead and talk about it. You've earned the right to talk about that shit. Yeah. By giving up the years in your life. Yeah. See, people but, won't, people won't even know Jay-Z was on some street shit. They yeah. think he's just always just been Jay-Z some street. Yeah, nah, no, that nigga, and, and he, he was. was and he, he was with that. Yeah. He was with so, it, but he left it behind. Exactly. You know? So what's next for you? So, shit. You know, Re the new project, Re Retaliation. retaliation. Uh, after that. I'm just coming consistent, bro, with the music. Finally. Yeah, it's Finally. Like I don't got... See, it was like, it was hard for me, too, because I always had parole or probation over my head. And that's all done now. And it's done now. Thank so, God. you know, I don't got to worry about, oh, I say this or I do this or I go out of town to go do a show. Like, that was a, a big thing, too. Like, I asked for permission to travel and they tell me no. And I'm like, damn, but I'm about to make... $15,000 out here. They're like, nah, we'd rather you go work at McDonald's. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm about to go do this show. And then if y'all catch me, then I'm going to have that 15000 to put on my books, whatever. Like, that's just where I was at. So yeah. now I don't got none of that over my head no more. So Love now it. it's just strictly, it's just all work, no play. All work. Just got to put it into the music, man. They ain't saying enough of me on the internet, gimmicks, bullshit. So it's with bitches and, and other rappers and beefing and shit like that. Like, I'm past that. I just went, like, I needed to go to jail for that shit that I said to 6 9 to, to sh like, that woke me up and showed me, like, oh, you can't do that shit on the internet. Because I thought I can just do whatever I wanted to do on the internet and then come back. And shit, I just, I just had the worst time in prison ever this time. Yeah. So you feel me? Because it was like, all right, they know who I am this time. And like, I right, put them in solitary confinement. It's whatever. <sighs> There we have it, man. Like I said, I've been a supporter for a bunch of years now. I've always been waiting for this moment. 
Yeah. When you come to this realization. I'll make you proud, man. Make you proud. <laughs> That's what it is, man. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I've always seen the potential, which is why I've always gone out of my way to, to, to yeah, promote you and yeah. feature you. And, and I appreciate this. you for that, too, because most people, they look at you and they just be like, oh, Vlad, he he a bad person. He this, that, he the police, whatever. And I, you feel me? You ain't never... You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never got nothing bad from you. You ain't yeah. ever put me in harm's way, put me in a bad position. I've never been nor arrested because I. of you. Nothing. Nor, nor right? will so, I. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Until next time. 600 Breezy. My guys. Peace. <laughs>